Hey, what's up? This is Austin Womack from KC Speed and Sport. I'm here today at the whiteboard. Uh, I'm going to drop some knowledge on y'all. Uh, I'm about to start a series, a three-part series on the three different energy systems. Okay. Obviously, uh, today we're going to talk about the phosphogen system. That's the first energy system. The other two are glycolysis and the oxidative system, which we'll get to later. Um, but today what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the phosphogen system, kind of tell you when we use that. And then um, I'm going to explain this uh, spectrum here that we're going to use throughout this series. And then I'm going to talk about a certain population that has been a highly debated topic, um, whether, like, is whether or not pitchers should do low intensity, um, long distance cardio training or short term high intense um, cardio training, what's best for pitchers. Um, you know me, I'm a former baseball player. Uh, baseball guys are kind of my bread and butter, so I'm going to tackle that debate here. First, let's go ahead and, and break down what the phosphogen system is. So, uh, well, well, first of all, all, the, all three energy systems, the point of the three energy systems are to replenish ATP. In other words, uh, to re reproduce energy in our body. So, so at, at any point in time, we're using these systems because we're always, we're always expelling energy. We always need to reproduce energy in our body. So the phosphogen system, when did we use this system? Well, whenever we're performing a physical activity where we are at 90 to 100% of our maximum power that we can possibly produce, we're using this system. Okay, so obviously if we're doing something as powerful as we possibly can, we're not gonna be able to do that very long. So the exercise duration using this system is somewhere between one and 10 seconds. Okay, so it's short term and it's high intense. Okay, that, that's, that's the main point I want to get across here. Um, now when we're training the phosphogen system, obviously if, if our goal is max power right here, um, we need a lot of rest. So the work to rest ratio is anywhere from around 1 to 12. Um, it can be even as high as 1 to 20 um, work to rest. So now, now we do that because you know, if we are trying to, if we're trying to improve at 95%, uh, that's going to be very taxing to our body, and so we need a lot of rest to recover to get back to 100% or at least close to 100% if we can before our next set um, in our training. So next I want to talk about this, this spectrum right here. Um, on the y-axis, we've got power, and on the x-axis, we've got endurance. Okay, so let's think about it this way. On one side of the spectrum, over here with power, you've got Olympic lifters, uh, people that that are, are here, that's all they do. They, their training is here, their sport is here, they're, they're never here, okay? And then on the other side of the spectrum, you've got like marathon runners, uh, as an example, okay? Their sport, their training, everything that they do is on this side. They never do any power training whatsoever. Um, but if you look at the most common sports, basketball, football, soccer, baseball, whatever it is, uh, you're using a combination of both. So. So you need power and you need endurance. Now, obviously, some sports need more power than endurance. Some are kind of right in the middle. Some may need a little more endurance. Uh, what I want you to do is think about the sport you play. Think about where it lies you know, on this spectrum right here. Uh, do, you, do you use more power? Um, do you use more endurance? Uh, think about the duration of your, of your activity, uh, like a football player, for example. The, a play usually lasts six to seven seconds. Okay, so they're probably they're, they fall in this range. They use this system most in their sport. Uh, but what I want to really talk about is pitchers. Okay, because there's this kind of long-term debate that's been going on on uh, the old school way of thinking, where pitchers need to get in shape, get their legs conditioned, so they're going to run, go run a mile, go run two miles. Um, and then there's kind of this new way of thinking that um, pitchers need to train like their sport, which is exactly what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, let's think about like, like the, the act of pitching a baseball, uh, pitching. How long does that take? Uh, like a second, maybe two seconds to, to throw a baseball. Um, so we're definitely here. How, how, uh, how much effort is used to pitch a baseball? Pretty much close to 100%, if not 100%. So we're definitely using this system when we throw a baseball. I mean, um, the act of pitching um, is the fa single fastest motion in all sports. When you throw a baseball, the humerus, this bone right here, internally rotates 
at over 7,000 degrees per second, the fastest motion in all sports. All right, so we're using the phosphorus system, okay? Now, obviously, you need to have like a general, a good base of conditioning um, to be able to, to throw a baseball at 100% effort um, 100 times in a given outing, you know, if you're a starter, for example. Um, but with that being said, like, we need to be smarter with our training. Um, if you are a, a pitcher and you are, your coach is having you run a mile or two miles, if you are a pitching coach or a coach at any level and you're having your pitchers run long distance, uh, you need to stop. Uh, because science, exercise science and research is backing up that, that, that decrease of performance, okay? What you're doing when you're running a mile or running two miles, you're training the oxidative system, an energy system that you never use in your sport, okay? While you're, while you're pitching, you never use that system, okay? We wanna train the system that we use in our sport, okay? So, so if you're a pitcher, you need to be doing exercises that, that are 90 to 100% of your, your maximum effort, and then that only lasts one to 10 seconds. Now obviously, if you, you got high intense stuff going on here, if you increase the volume, uh, you're gonna build a very good base of conditioning, okay? And it's gonna be much better for you, it's gonna translate much better to the mound than, than running a mile is. Running a mile is not going to translate to any sort of performance on the mound. Okay, so, so in conclusion, I just kinda wanna wrap everything up by saying, you know, it's just important to know where our sport lies on this continuum, okay? Once we figure that out, um, we can determine what, ener or what energy system we use in our sport, and then we can train that energy system when we're doing conditioning, when we're doing lifting, uh, when we're doing anything off the field or off the court um, to, to optimize performance in our sport. You know, obviously, we wanna be smart about this. We wanna use exercise science. We wanna use what we know to get better. And before I wrap up, you may or may not have noticed uh, I have a beautiful mustache. Um, here at Casey Speed and Sport, we are participating in Movember. Uh, Movember is an organization that is dedicated to raising awareness and raising support for prostate cancer. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more about Movember, um, you can go ahead and click the link I have in the description below. Um, if you feel gracious enough to donate to Movember, um, there's a link to donate as well. So, uh, we'd appreciate all your support, um, any donations uh, you may have. Uh, so thanks, and we'll see you next week to talk about glycolysis.